Hey, folks, welcome to Verified Investing Alerts, Trade Setups and Action Video. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. All right, folks, so today what I want to do is talk about interest rates, gold, and Bitcoin. What the heck is going on as we head into the Federal Reserve meeting today, where we will hear from Jerome Powell, 2 p.m. is the statement, and then obviously the press conference afterwards. So I think it's important to recognize that yields have pulled back, but they're making a bullish pattern. And what does this mean? Well, it's basically a cup and handle pattern, for those of you guys that know the terminology. And I'll show it right here. You can see it very, very clearly. So yes, yields are pulling back, but you have to recognize that while yields could come back further, they're making a bullish pattern for a breakout. And you can see very clearly cup handle pattern right here, basically a bull flag starting to form. So again, does it mean that we're going to break out this second to the upside? The answer is no. You could technically stay in this range and continue to trade down just a little bit lower, but ultimately you would expect a move higher. The move higher would be very easy to calculate. Notice how if you take a trend line and connect it to the recent highs, it's a perfect down sloping trend line. Once yields burst above that, and right now that's around 1.7%, once you get above that, that's when the bigger move will come. So we could technically trade close to 1.77% on the 10-year yield, and you wouldn't necessarily be guaranteed to move up to 2%. But if you get above 1.7% on the 10-year, you should expect a move higher. All right. So again, very, very important to understand this, folks. I can't stress this enough, is that with the Fed today, we don't know what they're going to do. My guess is they're going to start talking about reducing their bond buying that they've been doing. Remember, they're doing $120 billion a month in bond buying. This was an emergency um, thing that they started because of COVID. I arguably and I think very obviously can say that we are no longer in an emergency here in the United States. They should begin to taper those bond buying program or that bond buying program. But I don't expect them to say anything about raising interest rates during this meeting. I think they're going to start very small by tapering maybe by $20 billion on the bond buying. And then ultimately, once they get further along on that over the next few months, and again, what I'm thinking is they'll go to $100 billion in, in bonds, then they'll go to 80, then 60, then, then 40, then 20, and eventually zero. And then once you get to that point later on where it's at zero, they'll begin to talk about raising rates if the signals are telling them, them that they have to do that. To me, it's a no-brainer that eventually you're going to see interest rates go up. If you just look at the money printing, if you look at the liquidity in the system, if you look at the inflation numbers, which are just insane, um, you're going to have to raise interest rates. You can't keep, in, keep interest rates at zero, essentially. Now, do I think that the massive surge in inflation will modify? Yes, you're not going to see 5 to 7 or 8% inflation year over year for many years out. You're going to come back into 3% or so but essentially you're going to continue to see higher inflation than 2% in the system. You just have to work through all this money printing. I mean, there's been trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in money printing, plus the wealth that Americans have garnered from the stock market surge over the last 10 years and so forth. And that has to be taken care of. All right, let's take a look at gold now. Let's get into gold here. I'm gonna show my chart. This is the GLD. And you can clearly see on the GLD that we've broken out short term and we're now retracing. So as we broke out, I took profits on my gold swing trade. I'm looking to buy back at this trend line right here. This is basically a retrace to what we call the scene of the crime. The scene of the crime was the breakout right here. And this would be the breakout trend line that's down slope. But you could see it was a classic wedge pattern, bull flag wedge pattern. And again, it broke out here. Now you're retracing. And again, once it touches this trend line right around 172 or below on the GLD, I will look to get in. Now, remember, I've called the gold up move from this point all the way up. In fact, we were talking about this in various interviews I did, whether it was on Kitco or on Palisades or, or any of these other broadcasts. And I was talking about um, how you basically have a situation where gold is doing a 382 Fibonacci retrace off of this high, all right? And it's the same thing that happened in the mid 2010 area, 2008-ish area after we broke the previous high. So it's, it's just rinsing and repeating the same Fibonacci move. And sure enough, we have started to move up. I have a target for this year of around $2,100 on gold by end of year. And again, within two years, so two years from that, 
which would be about two and a half years from now, I'm looking at a 2,800 to 3,000 price target on gold. So that's what we're seeing here, folks, as we get into the action on gold. All right. So I'm sure everyone is interested in Bitcoin. And, and that's really, you know, that's what's so, so popular right now. So I'm going to bring up that chart and we'll show that chart and discuss Bitcoin here just a little bit. Bitcoin continues to just be in this trading range. Again, if you put on the moving averages, let me do that right now. You can see you broke out above the 20 moving average here. Now you're retracing, which is much the same as that gold chart retracing to the scene of the crime. So I expect Bitcoin to come down over the next few days back to about the 37.5. 37,500 level. And then my expectation is for another move up, getting close to this 50 moving average and maybe the former neckline of the head and shoulders, which is just above that 50 moving average. We're talking about a target of around 48,000 to maybe as high as 50,000. Now, the, the intermediate move after that will be to the downside. According to my analysis, we could go as low as 20,000, uh, at which point I will load the boat. I'm a huge long term bull on Bitcoin looking for 100K, maybe 500K within about five years. And again, the thought process is it's eventually going to get adopted more and more. Um, you know, you're going to see more and more institutions in there and so forth. And, and the more printing of money that goes on and the devaluing of the US dollar to pay off the debt and so forth is just going to make people want to buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies overall. Now, again, I generally stick to best of breed. So, you know, I look at the, the biggest market cap ones, not including Dogecoin, you know, it has to fit my methodology of wanting to buy a cryptocurrency that is scarce. So when you're printing 10,000 or when it when Dogecoin prints is 10,000 every single minute, that doesn't meet the criteria. It's basically like the US dollar with the Fed and the government printing money anyways. So why would you go in there? Now it's had a great run. All the credit to the world that people that jumped in and made a ton of money, it just doesn't fit my strict criteria of why I'm buying a cryptocurrency. So again, Bitcoin, short-term move uh, probably to the, well, short-term move down just a little bit, then up then intermediate move down, and then eventually surging, taking out 65,000 to the upside, up, up, and away. And that should be a crystal clear opportunity. Basically, the way I'll play it is I'll start dipping my toe in the water when we get below 25,000. Uh, even though I think it could go as low as 20,000 or 18 or 17,000, I'll dip my toe in the water below 25, then buy more at 22, buy more at 20, buy more at 18, and kind of just accumulate. That's how I do it, by, by the way, folks. That's a technique that I've developed that has made me much more profitable um, to buy small, but then continue to slowly accumulate. So in my head, when I look at Bitcoin, I say, okay, I want to buy this many dollars worth of Bitcoin. And then what I'll do is I'll divide it up into, let's say, one-fifth positions. And I'll buy that much below 25 or one fifth below, then another one fifth at 22 and another and so forth on the way down. In general, I found that it gives me a good average. I don't necessarily nail the exact bottom, but I get my average in that range. And if it's a bigger move like I expect on Bitcoin, then it's a great move to the upside. So in any case, that's what we're looking at here, folks. And again, Come find me on Twitter at Gareth Soloway. Come to InTheMoneyStocks.com. I run verified investing alerts, daily 20-minute videos you can watch with hardcore analysis, education in each and every one of them, trade setups, trades that we've taken, trades that we're analyzing, trades that we're in, and so forth. Um, and also, again, I post all my alerts there, all my swing trade alerts there. There's also a weekly broadcast that I do where you can actually ask me questions while you view my live charts. So come join InTheMoneyStocks.com. Um, join it at InTheMoneyStocks.com, verified investing alerts. Have a wonderful day, folks. Take care.